Hello, welcome and thanks for watching this product focus series brought to you by Keystroke. Welcome to Project Kickstart's second tutorial where we'll learn five easy steps for developing the project task list. We'll continue with the Project Kickstart online tutorials example that was introduced in the previous tutorial. Clicking on Next takes us from the name screen into phases. As always, instructions at the top of the page will explain what is required. We could begin this step with a shortcut by opening the Phases Library. Here's a project definition phase that can be dragged and dropped into the plan. There's also a development phase we can use, and we'll want to have a phase about putting this up on the website, but we don't see anything like that here in typical end phases, so we'll just key that in. Here's our web staging phase. And we deleted, we remember that we will need to hire a consultant to develop these tutorials. So we'll want to add an acquire consulting support phase. Now notice the order of these phases. Do we really expect to acquire consulting support after we developed and published the tutorials? No, we don't. But the order of the project phases and tasks is not important at this point because the planning wizard was only concerned with identifying tasks, not organizing them. Task organizing will occur later. Now clicking Next will cycle through these four phases asking for their tasks. This section tells us we're about to add tasks to the project definition phase. But if the project planner thinks of a task that belongs in a different phase, the planner can easily select the phase name and add the task and then return. This is how Project Kickstarts provides for nonlinear thinking about the project task list. Our first task in the project definition phase will be to create outlines of tutorial topics. We also happen to have three different tutorial development programs on hand, so we'll want to evaluate them. Evaluate Tutorial Development Software A, and then because the two others are just like that, copy this, paste it, paste it again, change this to a C, change this to a B, and we're done. After the evaluation, we'll want to choose a tutorial development tool. We'll also need to review and revise the tutorial topic outlines and get them approved. We'll also want to run a test case. Develop the first tutorial as a test. This task brings up a question. Should it be here in the project definition phase, or since we expect to publish and use it, does it belong in the development phase? This would be a judgment call, but it really doesn't matter because this task can always be moved later. It's virtually impossible to make a mistake in Project Kickstart because tasks we forget, tasks that are out of order, and even spelling mistakes are easily corrected. Let's move on to the development phase. In the development phase, we'll evaluate the test tutorial, revise the test tutorial based on the evaluation, then create more scripts for the other tutorials. With more scripts, we can create more tutorials, and with more tutorials, we could do more tests, and this will lead to more editing. Now it's time to move on to the next phase. Here in the web staging phase, we're going to stage the tutorials on the Project Kickstart site, build web links to those tutorials, and possibly stage them on iTunes-like sites to make them available to those who might not otherwise visit projectkickstart.com. Now we'll move on to the next phase. Here in the Acquire Consulting Support phase, we're going to interview the consultant develop a proposal, negotiate contract terms, and sign the contract. Working through the phases, as we have just done, will typically identify about 70 to 80 percent of a project tasks. 
Now let's move on to goals. Entering a project goals is essentially the same as it was for entering project phases. We could use the goals library, but we've chosen to key them in instead. And that's the last one. Notice how different goals are from phases. Phases are part of the project's timeline. Goals tend to apply to the entire project. And now it's time to step through these goals to see if they suggest any tasks that we have not thought of yet. We do that by clicking Next. Stepping through the project goals, we realize that if we're going to reach the goal of emphasizing Project Kickstart's benefits, we'll need to make a Project Kickstart's benefit list. In order to produce tutorials five to six minutes in length, we'll want to check total time in the tutorial software. Making the tutorials available free on the Project Kickstart website really didn't suggest any new tasks. Keeping the tutorials informative and to the point suggested reviewing the tutorials for interest and attention, and finally providing contents suited to both new Project Kickstart users and to potential users suggested that we obtain feedback from tutorial users and implement user suggestions as needed. Now, by clicking on Next in the Goal step, and this is how similar projects, people, and obstacles work as well, the planner can place these new tasks into phases. The new tasks are here on the left, the phases on the right. All the planner needs to do is highlight a task, then click on one or more phases to assign it. This task builds a Project Kickstart Benefits list belongs in the project definition phase. We click on that phase and a check mark appears to show that the task has been assigned. The next task, check total time in the tutorial software, won't require any work since each tutorial's runtime is clearly stated in the tutorial production software. This now seems more like a reminder than a true task, so it really doesn't need to be assigned to any phase. Review the tutorials for interest and attention needs to be done in both the project definition and in the development phase. Clicking on both phases will accomplish that. Obtaining feedback from tutorial users and adjust content as needed can only happen after the web staging phase. So it appears that we will need a new phase. Clicking on New Phase will allow us to create a post-production phase. And we're done. Now we can assign these tasks to it. The last three steps in the Planning Wizard all generate tasks in much the same way as we just have seen in the Goals step. Here, in similar projects, is where planners can develop new tasks from previously planned projects, including project templates. Here in the Teams section, the planner can identify project team members, as we've done with Raymond, Carol, and the consultant, and develop more tasks. Though by now we've already thought through most of this project's tasks, but let's take a look at what's new in the Team Library where contact information can be stored or imported from Outlook or ACT. Here's the obstacles step. This project doesn't have many obstacles except video production software can be unstable. We don't know that this will be a problem, but just in case, we've thought of a few tasks for dealing with it. These are not normal project tasks, they're contingency plans. We're not going to put these tasks in our plan, but they are here in case we need them. To review, we've seen how project phases, goals, similar projects, team and obstacles can be used to develop a project task list, and how skipping tasks, entering tasks out of order, and using templates are harmless and often handy shortcuts Learning how to assign people to tasks and how to reorganize the task list will be the topics of the next tutorial.